my name is Grant Takiwa. I'm a battalion chief. I'm with uh, the Chevron Richmond Refinery Fire Department. We come every year, we come for three annual sessions, March, April, and May for our corporate fire school. This prop is the rail car prop. It has some special problems associated with it, but it's supposed to, it's supposed to simulate a rail car derailment, uh, and they did a great job. They had the one rail car kind of on top of the other rail car, and then we add the additional problem with the uh, fire. And we have multiple locations where we have fuel coming out, with both liquid fuel and propane, and we light that thing on fire and let the guys go and figure it out. We actually create a three-dimensional fire situation where we have a leak on top of the middle tank. We're out of the dome. We'll have liquid fuel coming down and it runs down into rock. We get that pooling in there. We also have a, a pressure uh, liquid coming from three different locations on three different cars where they'll have to make the isolations, basically get a capture and an isolation. They also have to be able to control the ground fire and they need to be able to control the fire that's coming off the top, the fuel that's coming off the top, and then running down the side of the tank and creating additional problems. They've designed this prop to be approached in a particular way. There's actually two ways to approach the problem area, and one is going all the way around, mm -hmm. uh, and that's typically how we say we like to create a box around the problem. And they'll go along the perimeter and work their way to the middle where there's it's kind of like a V configuration where they're actually able to visualize the objectives. No, he's, he's and then on, they can actually make he's access. He's there's on the left-hand side, you can go between the one rail car on the far left and then the two that are stacked up on the, um, on the right-hand side. A lot of times it'll be dictated by the situation. So we definitely take into consideration things like uh, uh, our approach should, should not be uphill. We want to be coming in from, or we want to be coming in from the uphill side, upwind, upstream. Uh, that way, if there's any liquid fuel, then we're not walking into it. Part number two, same way, and it's dripping. Uh, Diesel. So the the file I'm putting the three, I isolated it. It's gone. Oh, but yeah, I, I took care of that while I did my 360. Something that. So I didn't have the whole thing. Go in, the other side, and try to make isolation. Okay. You didn't take phones off that far. I need phone, and we have a little fire on top of the part number two, which is like the upwind portion is very important because especially when we have a lot of that fire and that fuel coming off of it we don't want it blowing back in our faces uh, we'd like to have the wind at our back but sometimes we definitely have to uh, adjust based on the conditions so as we know these things happen anywhere and the conditions will dictate where we will actually make our approach and this one they actually have it set up so people will always go either around and come in through the right hand side or they'll make access to the middle, but you'll see most of the crews go all the way around. How they approach the prop, um, we had a discussion about, about this particular one because weather is an issue because uh, this one actually lends itself well to an exposure to the wind. So for instance, when they're trying to attack the dome, as you saw, they were trying to get the, the liquid fuel on the top. In order to do that, they actually have to lob foam into that dome and it's made difficult by where the deflection points are and by how the wind is always, no matter which direction the wind is blowing on that particular day, it's catching the foam solution when it's coming over the top or the finished foam and it's blowing it away. You can bounce it off that hat into the, into the dome. You can get closer if you have to. So they have to figure out a way to manage that, figure out where their brake is, figure out their footprint and how to get that foam into that dome. Um, and so a lot of times that presents challenges and then you think well is there a perfect way to do these things and I would argue that you know there's there's many different ways to do things and if you're expecting perfection then you're probably going to be waiting a long time. A lot of these guys have been to the school many times this prop is it's a newer prop so um, there are still going to be a lot of guys that are here that have actually bought this particular prop before and so there's a good mix of experienced hands and some newer people. So we, ha we expect those experienced guys to share that and make sure that the people are making good decisions and not getting uh, into trouble. We like to see our guys perform and generally they perform very, very well. And so um, it's a reflection on th their ability to uh, figure things out and to maintain the, uh, the knowledge that we try to deliver when we're conducting these schools.
We, we never like to say anybody did anything wrong. You know, we, we do a good job of uh, making sure that we recruit people that are really smart and capable and, you know, they know how to keep themselves out of danger. They have common sense so they can look at a situation and go, this is, this is definitely not the way that we want to approach it. We're not going to risk getting ourselves hurt. Uh, because anytime we hurt somebody, you know, it's a failure. It's obviously a failure of training, and it's a failure of how we, we, our philosophy of how we run training in our school. A lot of times, it could be an issue of style points, for instance. You know, maybe we could have done this a little bit better, or maybe this this per, uh, particular technique might have worked better, or using different uh, resources, or where we organize our manpower. Water is a, a preferable uh, tool for us to use because typically it will be in plentiful supply. Here it is. Um, we discussed whether or not that's realistic in, in any of these rail car incidents because as you know, we have rail lines stretching all over the country, all over the world. But for us, uh, the, where a rail incident occurs, it may occur in our facility where we do have access to water, but it may also occur outside our facility. There may not be hydrants available to provide us an unlimited supply of water. So we might be restricted to the amount of water that we'll carry on our apparatus. Um, but foam is now, it's an obviously a, a good choice, not necessarily for any of the three-dimensional fires, but definitely for the ground fire, because if we can utilize the, um, the Class B foam that we carry in pretty large quantities on our apparatus, then we can put down a really good foam blanket. It'll isolate the, the fuel from the oxygen, and we can control that, and we can go in and make our isolations. Uh, the dry cam, also, here at the school, we have a, a copious supply of, of dry cam extinguishers. It is a great tool to use. We actually sometimes will even use the dry cam in combination with the water. Um, and you, you can see how they, would, they did that a couple times on the, a couple of these evolutions where they would actually inject the dry cam uh, directly into the water stream and use that to kind of hopefully try to extinguish that fire that was up on the top that was so difficult for us to get the foam into. In judicious applications, they can actually use that dry cam to, to hit some small spots. They try to uh, make sure that they don't disturb that foam blanket, but there could be spot fires that uh, uh, a person that's using the dry cam is mobile, so they can go over and attack those um, and get those out pretty quickly. We have to make sure all the fires are out, obviously. We, it, it, a lot of times when we extinguish a fire, there is still fuel. So that's, that's the whole point. If we, if we want to eliminate all the fuel that is out of the vessel when we have a loss of containment, then basically we would just let it burn out. But when we're trying to uh, prevent uh, these exposure hazards, uh, losing containment on more vessels or uh, heat impingement on a pressure vessel that could potentially cause a blevy. Um, so we're generally trying to use these extinguishing dangers to put the fire out. But that means that we typically get have fuel still out of their, its containment. Um, and where it goes, you know, a lot of times it could, it, it's basically if we have put a lot of water on the ground, then the liquid fuel typically will be floating on top of the water and it goes wherever the water is. So a lot of times what it'll do is it can, it can actually work its way around obstacles or places that are a little bit more difficult to get to and it's still burning. So we have to find it. So you saw uh, the way that that particular prop is set up is that they're, they've created obstructions that, are, that make access difficult. I mean, obviously, if we put those fires right in front of them and they can just stand in one spot and put it out, that's not challenging and they're not learning anything. So, you know, it's actually a, a more of a challenge and these guys figure it out. So it's, um, it's again, testament to their training.